Now they know. We are live streaming on Facebook right now, and I'll do the intro of the show and my sponsor, and then I'll get right to you, Thomas. So just hang in there in your car. All right. We see people walking past your car. That's the way life is in the real world, you they guys. They kind of photo bomb it. Yeah. <laughs> so Facebook, hi. Welcome to Comic Spot interview number 739. Thomas Garski is here today. We're going to get to him in just a second, but wave at everybody real quick, Thomas. That's him. You can't miss him over there. So once again, this is Comic Spot interviews of comedians. This is the whole point of this is so you can get to know comedians, entertainers, bookers, club owners, and get to love them and follow them and help their careers. It's okay with me if you like them better than you like me. You know, I don't care. I don't care if you have clothes on at home. You know, I just don't care. <laughs> I want you to get to know all the people that are sacrificing so much time to make comedy and entertainment happen in the world. I think that's really important. I'd like to make a nod, do a nod to my sponsor, Veterans of Comedy. I'm a proud veteran of the Army, and uh, Veterans of Comedy has my back. So they're behind this podcast show all the way. So anytime you need to hire anybody that can do clean comedy or not, they can go either way and do comedy for military, active duty military, or veterans, or retired, or police, fire, you name it, or corporate comedy. Hit up the veteransofcomedy.com and check out some of their videos of the different comedians there. I think there's about 30 comedians on their site, just ready, willing, and able to make you laugh. So the veteransofcomedy.com. Now. For the real reason we came on today, sitting in the other square, that's Thomas Garst. I'd like Actually, to. Uh, I, I go by Epic. You go by what? Epic. Epic. That's his stage name. His given name is probably <laughs> Thomas Garst, but on stage in the biz, <laughs> it's Epic. Thank you for no, I, I, I legally had my name changed to uh, Epic Fail Garski. So, um, Epic yeah. Fail? Yeah, because wow. I felt like. I'd like to see the picture of the, of the judge's face when he hit the gavel on that one. <laughs> Probably had a smile on his face. Yeah, uh, not bigger than mine, though. <laughs> well, I'd like to read you the intro. Now, I asked him for a braggy intro, so don't think he's a big ego or anything. This guy's no, pretty doggone, he's pretty doggone humble. You'll find out why. Okay, Tom Epic, the host of the show Epic, plus, spent 20 plus years in the entertainment business. 20 plus years, did you hear that? He's opened up for D12, Obi Trice, Three Six Mafia, Tech Nine, Lil John, and the East Side Boys, Bone Thugs, and Harmony, and many more. He started the show to give some upcoming artists a platform to be heard, like me. He's so much like me, and to give his unique perspective on current events to engage in shenanigans and show the world how much of a mental ninja he thinks he is or that he is. Epic also mm -hmm. loves long walks on the beach, hates dolphins because they rape and has <laughs> the first Bill Cosby impression in the history of impression. Kind of like dolphins. Anyway, <laughs> I'd like to welcome you <laughs> to the stage right now. The amazing Epic. Hi, Epic. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for coming on to my little tiny comic spot. <laughs> I appreciate it. So where are you at? What city and state? 
Um, right now I'm in North Olmsted, Ohio. Um, I ha- I had a meeting. I have a day job too, so it it is what it is. What's your day job? <clears throat> kind of I actually, job. I'm a operations manager for a remodeling company. No way! My daughter was a model for five years. Oh well, no, not a remodeling company. A not like a model. I'm not that good looking. Yeah, I'm not that good looking. <laughs> remodeling. What type of remodeling do you do? Oh, like home remodeling, um, like bathrooms, kitchens, flooring, whatever. Yeah. Wonderful. What city is it in? Uh, North Homestead. Okay. Awesome. Well, mm-hmm. I appreciate your taking your time to come. Yeah, here. my boss needs to give me more money for plugging him right now. I'll say you. I hope he's watching. This guy deserves a lot because you have no idea. I've got fourteen thousand stalkers. I mean fans. I mean friends. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, oh they start blending together after a while, don't they? Don't they? Oh my gosh. So let's talk about your epic radio. Once we do that, we're gonna go back in time to how sure. you grew up and how you came up in the world to get to this point. But right now, okay. tell us everything about Epic Radio. Uh, so the Epic Radio show was started about four years ago. Um, I had retired from music and wanted to figure out like what was next for me. And uh, so I, w- I was driving Lyft and I picked up a co-host for another radio show. <clears throat> in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and she told me about her show. I started listening to it and, and this and that, and I was, I was thinking, like, you know, I've always wanted to get into radio. I've always wanted to, uh, like, I actually tried to go to broadcasting school a couple times. It just didn't work out, like, time-wise or whatever. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it this time. And I still didn't go to school and decided just like anyone else, um, I'm just going to wing it. And that's basically what I did. I, I did a bunch of uh, research and I, I little by little, I started off in my basement with a, a couple of us. And now four years later, we have our own studio in Parma. And we, we I think, I'm trying to think what episode we're on. I think we're on like 191 now. Um, and we, we do a weekly show to where we talk about current events. We do sports, we do crazy news. Uh, we have weather, uh, we have like sponsors and all this stuff. And, um, it's just crazy. Like to start off from basically like three of us in a basement to where we are now, you know, it's amazing. Wow. And the whole point of your show in a nutshell is to bring entertainment and give up and coming entertainers a spotlight. So yeah, um, part of what we do is uh, we have all these segments, but we also have an interview section of our show. So we spend about 15, 20 minutes, um, if they're remote, uh, doing an interview and and trying to give them exposure uh, to another fan base, you know, um, but if they're in house, then they get to do the whole show with us and, and they, they get the, uh, comment on the topics we're talking about. I still do the 15, 20 minutes where it's just me and them talking, but they get to participate in the whole show. Um, and, uh, we are on just about every platform you can think of Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, we're on Twitch, we're on iHeart uh, Radio, we're on Amazon Music Unlimited, Anchor, Spotify, uh, Pandora. I mean, you name it, we're on. We're on everything. Uh, we 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 try to whore ourselves around that way. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I wouldn't but... know anything about <laughs> whoring around. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm more like Deuce Bigelow. That's kind of where that's my jam right there, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but it started out as like three of us. Now it's like I want to say like eight or nine of us, and we we move from just audio only. We we do video. Um, we do stuff 
with a green screen. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's it's amazing how advanced we've gotten. You know, because I I never settle for just mediocre. Obviously, the name of the show is the Epic Radio Show. I, I, I'm taking on this persona, Epic, and I I really do live my life in that uh, and try to live my life in that scope. You know, um, and uh, also like one of the things that I end the show with every week is make life epic, you know, like, you know, as always make life epic. Cause I, I want people to have that kind of mind frame to use in their daily life. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff and life has a way of trying to drag you down. But if you live every day epic, then there's no way it can. That's beautiful. Well, let's go back in time to little epic before you were yeah. epic. Baby epic, yep. Baby epic. So when you were growing up, I, I have to dig in to find out what made you, what happened in your life to make you this beautiful, because that's how I <laughs> see you even before I met you. I knew um, you were humble. I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I try to be, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think everybody gets um, to a point where you have to be proud of what you do. And I try, I try to do that in a way to where, um, like I'm proud, but I don't come off as like, like an arrogant piece of crap, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, so sometimes you walk that line and that's why I, I have the friends I do that are like, Hey, you know, you're still that bum from, uh, <laughs> from, uh, West side of Cleveland. Like you need to, you know, uh, come down a notch, you know, and I, I do, you know, like, but I, I think you always have to have somebody in your life that kind of can bring you down a peg, you know, um, but you wanted me to talk about early Epic. Um, so I grew up on the West side of Cleveland, uh, six months old and, um, I had to have head surgery. Um, so I was born without a soft spot. And so I don't know if you know what the implications of that are like the, is, but basically what happens is uh, when you're born, you have a little soft spot and it's, it's for your brain to have room to grow. Well, obviously with me not having one, it was crushing my brain. <laughs> so if I didn't have this surgery, I would have been, either dead or, um, you know, mentally just, uh, disabled for life, you know? <clears throat> and so I'm only partly there. They caught it in time, you know? <laughs> um, but like, uh, so going from there, you know, I typical household, um, parents got divorced pretty early on. <laughs> That's pretty typical. Um, uh, I was about 10 years old. I ran away, lived with my grandma, um, graduated a year early from high school. Wow. Um, I started doing music when I was about 17 professionally. Uh, actually it kind of goes back to like, I was like 12 when I started doing music, but I, I was only, I was 17 when I was professional, uh, kind of if you want to call it that. Um, but then I, you know, I, I got pretty good at, uh, I was a rapper, believe it or not. <laughs> and I, I got pretty good at that. And I was able to tour and meet a lot of people and, and see, see a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have. And, uh, that's kind of when I, you know, became Epic was around 17 and I, uh, I, it's just weird how everything's, kind of transformed now I'm 38 I got four kids uh wife and uh I, I do this show once a week and it's like my outlet you know it, it I you know I try to help all these artists but they help me too you know yes they have a soft spot for you <laughs> yeah yeah pun intended <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> so when you were rapping was your name epic that's right mm-hmm Aren't you famous as a rapper? 
I I would I I wouldn't say famous. I would say that I was known. I I had I had times where let's put it this way. There was times where I was very unknown and then times where I was at the brink of getting there, but I don't think I crossed that threshold to being famous. Obviously not if I'm working at a remodeling company. Um <laughs> <laughs> you know uh but I, I you know there was definitely some times and i i think it could have gotten there but i i made some crappy decisions along the way too I, everything wasn't always epic um so i made some crappy decisions along the way and it kind of caused myself to miss opportunities that i probably should have gotten otherwise i i, yeah. I shoplifted my way through the 1960s so <laughs> You got nothing on me. I was yeah. a bad girl. <laughs> I could do that in Portland, Oregon without meth. Without meth. See, they, they, they got to get on your level. That's what it is. I was gangster. <laughs> That's right. Straight up G. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, what's cool, too, is one of the things, and this has always been a thing of mine, is I never took anything too seriously because even when I was a rapper and I was I thought I was like a white Tupac or whatever um <laughs> I I still had humor in my lyrics of some kind you know I've always been pretty uh into comedy and 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 uh watched a lot of comedy growing up like some of the greats um and like like George Carlin and um I mean I'm blanking on like just about everybody right now but you know like i just i watched a lot of comedy i always thought that was something that eventually i would get into i still haven't become a stand-up comic but in my show uh i i i do consider it a comedy show because we don't take anything seriously on it and i got news for you what's that you're a host you might not be yeah. a necessarily considered a feature or a headliner but you're hosting a comedy venue and that translates to comedy clubs well yeah and we've had comedy club owners on the show we've had we have tons of comedians on the show half my cast are comedians um you know that that work every day and they go out and do shows and stuff like that and i i go out and i support them and uh like we have jesse pimpanella he's hilarious um he just released an album called The Hot Mess. And it was number one on Amazon. No way. Um, so, yeah, shout out to him. Uh, Marcus uh, Rodriguez, he uh, does impressions. He's an impressionist. And he dresses up like silly characters every week to do the weather. Um, I have uh, Kevin Morrison. He's kind of new in the comedy scene, but he does. He's steady doing... Uh, uh, doing shows and stuff like that we have alexa she um she's a comic and she she does i mean literally and then i have uh chris kettler who's also a co-host and he he owns a comedy club chris so, kettler yeah i you love know chris him kettler, yes uh you know ryan hufford too yes i love yes. ryan he's crazy he never he's stops one, no he's one of the producers on the show no way yeah. oh my gosh i so, can't wait to come on that show <laughs> yeah that's uh this sunday you're gonna be on yes i can't wait it's gonna be well, a lot of fun so talk to people about um, how you're making a difference and how they can also make a difference in in what they're doing if they're in entertainment or not how to how to how do you care and give a darn about other people's careers instead of just yourself? I think that would be, you're good at this. I think that helping other people also helps yourself. And, and, and sometimes in like almost a selfish way, you know, because helping people just, uh, you know, let's loose all these endorphins and you feel good about yourself. And even if in some weird narcissistic <laughs> existence yep. um you it does it, you do you feel better about it you know like and it, it doesn't really matter what profession profession 
you're in. You could be a, a waitress at Applebee's or um, smoking crack on the corner. But if you help somebody else in, in any way possible, um, you're going to feel good about it. And it's, you know, we live as human beings. I really feel like we're kind of symbiotic. You know, we, we need other people to live. I mean, it's, it's scientifically proven that, it, you know, isolation and being alone is detrimental to your health, mentally, physically, emotionally. So get out there and help people. And I, I believe in karma. And I think it all comes back to you. Absolutely. You know, like I've gotten to the point where I don't want to receive anything if it's not coming back to me for something good I've done. Exactly. So it's it's such a great feeling to do things for other with no strings attached and have it come back to you. You didn't Absolutely. expect it. I hate asking for favors. It's yeah. like, nah, I'd rather people notice me and want to do something. I don't want to get booked because, you know, Sinbad was on my show. I want to get booked because I'm funny, you know, and, yeah. then you're, you know, you're probably the exact same way. Yeah, I, I'm the same way too. Like uh, we have a like I'm not looking for the most famous person to have on our show all the time. I mean, it, it is nice to give a rating bump and everything, but I want to use that uh, experience to hopefully get them to look at past shows and then find somebody that isn't as famous and be like, oh wow, that guy's really funny. I'm gonna look him up. That that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like I. I want to use, in a way, use the bigger guest to help the smaller guest, you know, like, and, and if it helps me along the way, sure, but that's not my main goal. No. I just like doing this. I We think alike. We're out of the same <laughs> cloth. That's what yeah. I loved. I knew by reading your interview. Are you a Pisces? Yes. I am too. Ah, yep. hot darn. That's great. Yep. So tell people, I've got to kind of cut it short today, yeah. but I want you to come back. You can bring your whole cast and crew All with right. you. That'd Let's, be awesome. But I'd love to have you tell people how to follow you, where sure. you want the most amount of support, um, if they need to help you out financially for your show or they want to be a sponsor, how to do that, and where to um, see you if you're performing somewhere besides on your once a week show. Well, if they want to be a sponsor, just make the check out the cash. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, if they want to be a sponsor, they, they can go on to our website, uh, theepicradioshow.com. You can also catch up on past episodes and watch us live on our website. Uh, but you can follow us on all the social medias. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Twitch, um, and, and anywhere that you listen to podcasts, we're on all of them. So you literally just Google us and you, you'll find someplace that we're lurking. Uh, you're doing such a great job. I, I'm just so happy for you that it's taking Thank off. You. And it's got a name. Absolutely. Thank you. And I apologize. I have to keep it short. That's fine. And I want, I want you back. I want you back. of Brain Baby Media of 2021. No, I'm just <laughs> I, I want you back on with anybody you want to bring on okay. again, and I'll hit you up to get a date from you as soon as I get off here. Okay. Sounds and good. I'll, I'll share this video on my Facebook. If you'll share it, I would really absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. And then uh, make sure you catch Linda Marcus Smith this Sunday on the Epic Radio Show at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will see you then. And as always, make life epic. Epic! Thank you, Epic. Bye. Bye. Love you lots. A lot. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs>